guys, this is Powers with the uh, Lord of the Rings SPG team and uh, Fellowship of the Carolinas. Um, I'm doing another hobby blog, uh, vlog, I guess. And uh, so yesterday I made two videos, um, and last night I did a little bit of work on the trees that I showcased yesterday. So I'm going to talk about a little bit about those, and then um, I'll probably showcase some of my miniatures, some of my painted armies, things like that. There was a comment on the first video asking for uh, more... Um, more more content with some, some of my goodie boxes uh, so uh, I'll show off uh, some, some of the cool stuff um, and my painted armies and things like that um, so uh, we'll be right back with that alright I'm back with uh, some of these trees I was working on there was a couple I showed um, one was uh, the floral wire tree that wasn't quite finished um, I went in and finished that and I wrapped all of them in the masking tape there we go um, and uh, this one ended up a lot taller than I thought it would, and it's a little bit skinny, but um, I think it'll turn out okay once it's painted up. And I have a kind of a weird bulge right there where I wrapped the wire. And um, But I just wanted to show kind of what I was talking about with wrapping it with tape. There's a couple spots that could use, um, use a little bit more tape, so I'm going to just pull a piece off. Just plain old masking tape. I guess you could use painter's tape, but masking tape is a little bit more flexible. Um, it's more or less the same thing. Um, this is, I think this is one inch wide. Um, I think the half inch or the three quarter inch is probably a little bit easier to work with, but this is what I worked, I had on hand. Um, so you take a piece off, um, there's just really nothing special about it. You just, uh, kind of find your, let's see, which part was it? There we go. Find the spot you want to wrap. You put it on, get it started. And then it helps to, to really wrap like from where the tape is going on. So um, instead of pulling from the, the end, you just press it on and it, it grabs onto the contours of the wire pretty well. So do that. You just push it in and you can you get these little parts like right here in the, the, uh, the elbow there. You can just push it in and uh, the tape is flexible enough to accommodate that. Sometimes you might have to add a little rip where you're doing um, like a curve or something like that, or the tape doesn't want to quite make it all the way around. Um, and you just really just like smooth it on there, get it on there pretty good. Um, one thing that can happen, especially after you've painted, uh, spray painted the tape, is it can peel up at the um, at the very ends uh, where you kind of finish off each piece. Um, and a really quick and easy way to fix that is get a little bit of super glue and uh, stick it on and kind of use um, use another piece of tape or a piece of paper to smooth it down and like really seal it. Um, and that usually holds down those ends really well. Um, so there's the tall one. Uh, here was the really small tree. This one took a really long time. It kind of didn't do a great job on it. I think it'll look fine once it's painted with uh, the lichen on it. But um, it's really hard to get the tape on those little, especially on the roots, on these little tiny... Uh, appendages and stuff but um got that one done and then this is the big tree um well the other one ended up almost as big but this is the big tree um that i finished off yesterday i'm kind of excited about this i'm thinking i might try to do i mentioned uh building flats in the second video which are the uh the the platforms used in all florian by the um by the galadrim uh galadrim sorry and um I might give that a shot if I can figure out a way to do it modular because I don't always want them on there, but um, I'm always a fan of making things with options just because it's better to have things you can reuse in my opinion. I guess that comes from me being a computer programmer. Um, also, I finished off these cardboard bases. These were squares yesterday. Um, I took my trusty hobby knife and just you know went around the edge, carved them down, put the tape around the edges. These make really nice beveled edge bases for small terrain pieces. These are not as sturdy as like MDF or hardboard would be. Um, so I do recommend if you're doing like a building or something like that, use something more sturdy. But for things like the tents I showed and trees, they're they're pretty good because they're lightweight, they're fast, they're cheap. Um, you don't have to do a lot of cutting or anything like that. It's just sharp hobby knife and or a Stanley knife or something and a little bit of tape and cardboard. And I, this is cardboard from a just a box I got in the mail. I mean, it's nothing special. Um, so that's the trees. Um, sometime today I'm going to 
put the the super um, the hot glue on the base, uh, get them glued down to the bases, and maybe spray paint them. I got to decide what I'm going to do about the flats first. Um, if I don't get get to that today, that'll be in my next uh, my next hobby vlog. And um, that's all for the trees. I'll be right back, and uh, I'll show off some of my um, some of my armies. So uh, stay tuned. All right, hey guys, I'm back. I'm um, gonna do a little bit of showcase with some of my uh, my armies, some of my painted stuff, and uh, also talk a little bit about storage, just because that kind of popped into my my head. And that's a constant uh, uh, struggle for gamers is figuring out how to store things properly. Um, I'm kind of cheap, so I don't like to spend a lot of money on the storage of my models. I'd rather spend my money on my models. Um, but uh, one thing I found, uh, it, I think it is worth it to buy a, an actual storage system. It's just a matter of which one you get um, to make it affordable. Um, I choose a combination of uh, primarily a Sable Army Transport. And Army Transport's been around for a really long time, um, since I was a kid. And uh, don't know if the guy is still making stuff. I bought some trays from him. Uh, last year um, he had a seal sale but last time I looked I think they were out of stock but you can still buy the trays and, and cases from uh, the war store uh, Neil at the war, war store he's it's a pretty good website um, but here's what it looks like this is the original army transport you've probably seen him um, one thing is he does not ship outside of the United States or North America he might do Canada I don't remember but um, he doesn't do international shipping anymore. He used to. I guess it got too expensive to um, break even. But um, inside of these cases are foam trays, like you would see in different storage systems. And they come in different sizes. Uh, I think one inch, one and a half inch, to, uh, three inch maybe. There's like a four inch. Um, but basically, they have inventory size, cavalry size, and like tank size. Or monster size, more or less. Um, they're only he only sells pluck foam, and that's these little you can see the little squares. Um, and uh, but it's really nice. And the one reason I I've picked Sable Army Transport as opposed to like Battle Foam or anything like that uh, is one, Battle Foam is super expensive, and two, um, with Sable Army Transport, um, I can get ugh, one of these big comics storage boxes, the kind you would see in a comic book store, right? These long bulk storage boxes for comics, and it perfectly holds two stacks of Sable Army Transport trays. So um, what I do is I take the stuff I'm going to use with me in the transport, I can actually fit two or three armies in there, um, and then everything else that is not going to be used uh, stays in the, in the box, in the closet, or what have you. Um, and I, I actually need to get a bigger uh, army transport as I start having more stuff I like to take. I always try to bring a couple armies when I go to a games workshop in case there's new players or something like that, or somebody needs an army, um, or I just can't make up my mind on what to play. Uh, but they make a larger uh, battalion size uh, case, which my brother used to have. It was like it has like a rolling, it's like a rolling piece of luggage almost. And then there's like a motor pool size, which is. It's two uh, trays wide and uh, pretty deep, so it's like two of those. Um, and uh, so I, I need a bigger one just so I can carry more stuff. The other thing I use is a, a Chessex figure case, and uh, Chessex has been around forever. They make, uh, mostly known for making dice, um, but they also make other game aids. But they also make this figure case, which is, I think retail it's 30 bucks uh, US, but you can buy find them on eBay for 20 and they're really, really tough. I mean, these things are, they're uh, thick, um, they're thick plastic, you can see how thick that lid is, um, they latch really securely, they, uh, this one fits, uh, something like 80 models, I think, but it's, um, it, it's only really good for infantry, um, they make one with a slightly larger trays, but they're not very deep, um, oh, I'm gonna phone call, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Uh, sorry, can't can't always control phone calls, so I had to take that one. Um, anyways, I was talking about the Chessex case. Um, they're they're uh, inexpensive. They're very sturdy. They hold a lot of models. I use mine mostly for metal models um, that fit really well. Um, you know, uh, and it's got two layers in here. So let me take the first one out. It just kind of has this. Uh, I guess it's cardboard. I'm not really sure. Divider underneath to protect it.
And then there's the second layer down there. Mm -hmm. um, so that is some of my storage mm -hmm. solutions. Oh, the other the other main thing I use is um, let's see, this backwards. There we go. The other main thing I use for um, my cavalry is cavalry can be very cumbersome to store, and this is about to become really important with uh, me starting my Rohan force. And uh, so what I do is I actually try in all, as many cases as I can to keep the uh, riders and the mounts separate. Um, so what I do is I put the mounts in these, uh, cr these are basically craft storage mm -hmm. bins. I think they're, um, they're really, really cheap at Walmart, but they use them for like beads and stuff. I used to use some of these for uh, fishing gear. Um, but they hold a mounted model, or they hold a, a mount really well. And I figured this out because when I assembled my warg riders, I kept the wargs separate to use as wild wargs. Um, and they fit perfectly in here. And they don't fit in my case, so I have to bring an extra bag to, to put them. Uh, I guess they do if I took some trays out. But um, I do it for wargs, and then I also have uh, the one for my knights of Minas Tirith horses. But they fit in there perfectly. I'm about to go pick some more of these up. Um, they hold uh, 18 um, mounts, basically. Uh, and again, I keep saying basically, and I'm missing all those puns. So, Damien, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. Um, I'm missing my, my base puns. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's how I do cavalry. And then, I don't know if you saw in my, my tray, I keep the, uh, the riders separate. So um, I'm going to look through my cases really quick, figure out some good stuff to show you guys, um, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Um, and I decided I'm just going to show a little bit of some of my most recent uh, painting work uh, because I'd like to to show off these armies. I'd like to actually set them up and uh, show them off that way. So I'll just kind of go through some of the stuff I've been working on recently. Um, and I actually have a, a painting blog that I used to produce called Forays in Middle Earth. I haven't posted on it in a little over a year. Um, just got to be too much to, to write the posts, and I, I, got, I would get bored doing it. So it was supposed to be for fun, and if I get bored doing it, what's the point? So um, we're actually going to start calling these videos Forays in Middle Earth as kind of a spiritual continuation of the blog. Um, so I'll showcase some of my work uh, from that in uh, future videos. But um, now I just wanted to show off... Um, I recently did a, a big war, a war band of Mordor Urukai with uh, led by Shagrat, and uh, Shagrat, it's the Shagrat with um, the mithril coat, and I haven't, um, let's see if I can turn my light here, I actually forgot to paint the mithril coat, let's see, it's a bit washed out, but let's see, there we go, there he is, I'm really proud of these, I actually press molded war rider shields um, for these Urukai so they could be armed with shields. Uh, Fence four is a bit rough, and uh, it was an easy, easy uh, job in press molding. Some of the shields turned out better than others. This one did not turn out super great. Um, you can see, I think these came out really well. It's hard to get the capture the detail on camera, but uh, you kind of get the idea. Now, those are a lot of fun to produce. Um, I, I've always loved those models, and in my my first life as an SPG gamer, I had a, I had a, about a dozen as well. Which I still had them, but um, so now I have a, a warband of Shagrat and twelve Urukai, as well as um, the other Shagrat. I'm turning into a banner bearer, which will probably be a, a while coming. Um, but in this tray, I also have <clears throat> I have six of the nine uh, mounted um, as part of my blog. Uh, basically, the theory behind my old blog was uh, to paint and play my way through the journey books, sort of like Andreas is doing with uh, over on. Uh, <laughs> Spill for and the sh the fellowship or STF, and, and uh, so I have six of the nine. I still need two more um, mounted Nazgul and the Witch King um, without the armor, the Witch King of Angmar with on, on the rearing horse. It's kind of a rare model. I haven't been able to find one for a reasonable price. Um, but I have six of these guys. I have all nine on foot. Um, some of them are duplicate sculpts because I wasn't able to find the unique sculpts. But uh, and I've got a. Uh, Nine of these. At some point, I'll I'll set them all up. They look really good all on the table. Um, they're uh, they're nice models. I you know I like the named wraiths, but um, I like these guys better. These are the the classic ones. Um, so that's it for that tray. And then we've got uh, these two trays, which have my speed painted orcs. I did a, a post on Reddit and Imager and. Um, 
where I covered how I, I speed painted them, but I basically had, I had four sprues of Mordor orcs, and I uh, really didn't want to paint them, so I decided I would just paint them and just do it really fast. So <clears throat> I started uh, on a Wednesday night and finished them on a Tuesday night uh, the next the next week. So um, I just used a combination of dry brushing and washes, and, um, and uh, these guys came out really well. Uh, you can... Um, you can uh, find the post over on Reddit. It's uh, how to paint 48 orcs in a week, I think is what I call it. Um, over on uh, our Mini Middle Earth Miniatures, which is the uh, the SPG subreddit. Um, I highly recommend you check that out. It's it's not super active, but uh, there's uh, some unique stuff in there that you won't see on the, uh, the GBHL uh, page and things like that. So, yeah, I gotta, you know, they're just orcs, but they, they look really good on the table when they're all together. They're painted to a good tabletop standard. Um, also, right after I finished those, I had a box of Warriors of the Dead, the plastic kit, and um, I, I got them. Uh, I got them in a in a big batch of stuff uh, from from someone, and uh, I decided I would paint them really quick because I knew they would be all washing and dry brushing, and I think they turned out really well. Um, for and they're actually a really nice plastic kit to the point where if I ever needed any sort of like zombie warriors or maybe even as specters, I would go back and paint them um, with full colors rather than just dry brushing. Um, and it sounds like my son is waking up, so I'm gonna I'm gonna call it a day, and uh, I'll see you guys next.